Today we are going to review a really cool bike and what might be the most supple bike I have ridden so far this year and that is the Norther Lion Ultralight Rando Bike. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers and if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, gravel exploring, interesting bikes, the supple life, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And if you're digging this content, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or by buying one of our patches. You guys know I love interesting bikes and this definitely classifies as as a interesting bike. Northern Lion Ultralight Rando is a collaboration between Northern Cycles in Portland and the highly esteemed frame builder Jeff Lyon. If you're not familiar with Jeff Lyon, check out his website, Lion Sport. He's really well renowned for creating these ultralight randonneuring style bikes built around 650B. This bike in particular is a collaboration between uh, Norther and Jeff. Jeff constructs most of the bike and sends it over to Norther for finishing where uh, they add the final brazons, uh, pick out the components, handle the paint and deliver the final bike. So a pretty cool collaboration between these two companies. If you're not familiar with a rendering style bike, uh, basically they are designed for really long rides. Rendering events last anywhere from 100K, 200K, 400K, all the way up to uh, the granddaddy of all the events, Paris, Brest, Paris. So the bikes are optimized for comfort, quickness, because you do have to complete these events uh, within a time frame, And many of them are designed to carry a front handlebar bag uh, just so you have quick access to layers and food for the long ride. You don't need a randonneuring specific bike uh, to ride a randonneuring event, but as a style of bike, that is how it is classically known. So the Northern Lion is a steel frame and fork. What really sets the bike apart is the tubing selection. It's really thin stuff that you can feel while you're riding. The top tube has thicknesses of 747, so definitely on the thinner and more supple end. The down tube is 858, so a little bit thicker, but still relatively thin uh, compared to what you would get in a production bike. The fork uses Kasai Toei uh, special uh, fork blades. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Those fork blades are designed to give you a really supple ride. Lots of vertical compliance up there. Bike is built around a 650B by 42 millimeter tire uh, designed to have racks and fenders. And what I think is absolutely bonkers is that the bike with a rack and fenders and a handlebar bag only weighs in at 25 pounds. Just to give you a frame of reference, you know, a bike like a Surly Midnight Special completely naked weighs 25 pounds. This bike is finished off with lots of nice touches. It's got a SP uh, Dynamo hub, a Guy Bertaud uh, handlebar bag with a custom quick release decaler made by Star Michael over at Northern Cycles. Really slick. It uses these kind of like hose connectors uh, that you can just pull open. The bike also uh, attaches with a leather strap to the tombstone of the render rack, so it's fairly secure. Another custom touch that Star Michael did was he created a bracing system uh, for the handlebar bag so it doesn't get all floppy and rattly. Unique to this bike too is a pump peg holder for a Lazine road pump. The Lazine pump was uh, slightly modded with a spring, so, so there's enough pressure to keep it within the pump pegs. The brakes are old school Mathic raids that were polished to a mirror finish, and the cranks were a TA wide range double, which you guys know I love. Uh, the rest of the drivetrain was uh, kind of new old stock Shimano 9 speed, and the shifters, yes, uh, were down tube index shifters. So enough of the boring stuff, how does this bike ride? So my first big impression was just how springy uh, the frame was. If you've never ridden a bike with really light tubing, it's definitely a treat. The bike feels like a taut spring. When you put in inputs, it just kind of propels you forward. When I was riding, I was actually surprised to learn the chainstay length was 440 because it felt much shorter. The, the overall experience was just smooth, supple, springy, and an absolute joy to ride. So while the rear end uh, chainstay length was longer than I gen generally prefer, something about the combination of the overall geometry and just the, the springiness made it feel like a quicker bike. That was the rear end, the front end, uh, to be honest, took a little bit of getting used to. This bike uses a really low trail geometry, which as you guys know, kind of helps keep the uh, steering nice and light when you have a load in the front. I believe the trail number of the bike was 36, so definitely the lowest trail bike uh, I have ridden. And when I first hopped on with nothing in the bag, uh, it took some adjustment. 
It just steered really quickly. It didn't take a whole lot of input, but after I put a lock in there uh, and some snacks and a water bottle to kind of weigh down the front a little bit more, the steering uh, mellowed out, but still remained fairly light. So the thing about low trail in my experience is that if you've never ridden one before, it does take some adjustment. Uh, by the end of the day, it, it felt second nature, but definitely eye-opening when you first get on the bike. So with a load, it took very little input to steer the bike. You could almost steer with your hips. It would just kind of bank really easily into a turn. Another thing I noticed is that this bike has a ridiculous turning radius. I could do really tight turns with very little effort, uh, where some bikes will kind of shoot wide. This one definitely cuts in a little bit more. In terms of front end handling, it was very responsive and lively. So what I like and dislike about this bike, uh, the first big like is just how how the bike felt. I don't think I've ever ridden a bike this springy before. Uh, you know, part of it uh, is the ultralight tubing and my body weight. The bike was a little bit on the flexi side, but in a fun and responsive way. Another big like was the way the bike climbed. You've, you've probably heard that, that term planing, and sometimes it's hard to discern whether that's happening or not. Uh, with this bike, when I was standing and climbing, it was fairly obvious to me that uh, the bike was you know, storing the energy and giving it back during the climb. Another big like is just the aesthetics. Uh, they did a really great job on the paint job, on the finishing components with the high polish and everything. The paint is this cool, uh, almost dark bluish uh, green color that's constantly shifting with the light. You know, all the components are polished to a high polish. So those are the likes. What are the dislikes? One big dislike is uh, the handling is gonna take some time to get used to. If you've never ridden a low trail bike, when you first hop on, it's gonna be a little squirrely. You're gonna need to put some weight in the front uh, to kind of chill out the steering. But I think with time, you will adjust. But that kind of handling might not be for everybody. Another potential dislike is the price. This complete build uh, starts north of $4,000. So it is not an inexpensive bike. But I think with the experience of Jeff Lyon, just his quality craftsmanship, and also the finishing touches by Northern Cycles, if you're looking for a bike like this, which is really hard to find, then it is well worth the money. So I'm gonna say that this bike definitely probably won't be everyone's cup of tea. It's Neo Retro. It's got, uh, you know, really low trail handling in the front. The tubing might be a little too uh, delicate for everyday use. But if you're looking for a truly unique bike with a very interesting handling and a ride feel to it, this is a bike to check out. If I were to use uh, whiskey terms, if your, you know, kind of standard bike was just a solid bourbon, this, this bike is more like a complex scotch. There's a lot of nuance to the bike and it's just super interesting. What do you guys think of the bike? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys have any other questions, leave those in the comments. And as always, keep the supple side down.